Peugeot launched the large family SUV in their range, the 5008, during last year. We did test the top of the range GT line diesel version in a brief test. Well, this is the petrol engine allure version, which means the slightly lower spec version. You come around, you have a look. Nice 19 inch wheels on here with good mag looking mag wheels. You've got the chrome detailing, which looks very neat. You have a look over here and you'll see a few features in the back that I think are very nice and very nice to look at. First of all, a Peugeot feature is the three separate seats in the back, not a bench seat. And something that you can do as well is you can actually adjust them individually and adjust the legroom for the middle row, which of course will affect the legroom for the rearmost seats and also boot space if that's what you need. So you do have quite a lot of adjustability, can I call it, in the middle row over there. You come around to the rear and you have a look. And even on a lure spec, you do get the auto opening tailgate. And I've just shown you, for example, over here with one of the rear seats up. Once you've moved the seat forward, there's a bit of legroom, but they are for children. But also, obviously, boot space. Typical of a medium SUV that allows for seven seats. Pretty much no boot space with seven seats in place. You can do that, of course, and have a six-seater and have some boot space or drop that down. And, of course, it makes a really nice family wagon. And, of course, press button and you close the back like that very neat got the chrome strip over here just as a detail and of course very typically Peugeot looks to it it's pretty similar to its slightly smaller brother the 3008 just that little bit bigger let's check it out inside 5008 seriously in its element cruising on a freeway as we're doing right now we're sitting at the speed limit 122 kilometers an hour and of course we've got the eye cockpit which is very familiar to Peugeot the tiny little squared off steering wheel different but very comfortable you've got flappy paddles nice set of paddles behind because we are in a six-speed automatic version which in fact there are only automatic versions available in South Africa of the 5008 so there isn't really a choice there this one's powered by the 1.6 litre four-cylinder turbo putting out 121 kilowatts 240 newton meters of torque some people have criticized saying that the petrol version is a touch underpowered look it's no racing car but then again a seven seater family suv is not meant to be a racing car or you buy an m version bmw if you really want if that's what you're after so i don't see that as a criticism what i'd rather criticize quite honestly is the fact that this is the allure trim level which is the can i call it the lower priced version so it gives you things like the screen you can see in front of me, but very limited functionality on the screen. You can see I've got it on a ventilation aircon system, and that's something else. You want to adjust temperature or fan, you've got to do it on the screen. Bit strange, but different. Uh, <coughs> I'm not sure if I'm that happy with that, but it is a feature. But if you look here, I've gone onto the home screen. You certainly have limited functionality. For example, no standard navigation. You use your Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for that which you can do but that's a case of if you don't if you want all those other features then pay another 45,000 Rand which is what it would cost you and you can go up to the GT line version which adds that functionality on the infotainment system adds the sunroof adds the leather etc that's obviously always the kind of choice you can make and where your budget goes and decisions you want to make it's things like that but what this car does have, and they both would obviously have, is that lovely French soft ride, that cruise, that softness on the open road that you do get from very much traditionally from French cars. It's really a nice cruiser, I have to put it that way. Behind the wheel, you've got that eye cockpit dashboard, as Peugeot like to call it. It's showing me that we've still got 350 kilometers left in the tank, half a tank of fuel, so you're good for a range of seven to 800 kilometers if you're cruising freeways, etc. I mentioned while we were on the road, the screen over here, which I'm a little bit 
can I call it disappointed? I would actually say in a way because of what it gives you. Also, if you look over here, when I go into reverse gear, it comes up with that over there and not a full-on parking camera, which again, I would have thought on this car. And considering it is quite a longish car, I would really like to have seen on the vehicle. Talking about that, I shifted the gears. You press the button over here. It's got what they call the pistol grip type gear shift over here to operate the six-speed automatic gearbox. Very, very smooth very comfortable you saw what it's like on the road you've got the electronic park brake over here you've got a sport mode button over here didn't even bother with it it's obviously going to affect things like your gearing and your mapping of your transmission more than anything else but that six speed is very smooth and comfortable something else that's maybe a little bit outdated these days is if you have a look over here your cruise control is over here on a separate stalk most manufacturers these days have it on the steering wheel not a criticism as such but something i am a little bit surprised but what is also a nice feature on this vehicle i can't show it to you now unfortunately but if you're on the freeway and you get close to another vehicle you'll see a nice warning that comes up there and says vehicle close and active braking on the vehicle which again is really nice looking around at the trim you've got the different levels of the dash again because of the eye cockpit feature Nice feature over here, nice, you can see the quality, and then almost a fabric type effect on the lower dash and around onto the doors. Looks very neat, looks very smooth and comfortable. You've got a nice center console over here with extra levels and lighting, so you've got everything you want over there. Your USBs are up front as well. All of these features, very comfortable. Lots of space, lots of legroom in the back as I've shown you already. So the question of course becomes, price well there are so many competitors on the market first of all that i'm not going to mention you want a medium family suv that can provide seven seats well check out the opposition and then you can make decisions this one comes in at 539 900 in a lure spec there is the gt line spec above it which gives you quite a lot more features i've mentioned them along the way as well and that comes in at 45,000 rand more at 584 900 you can also get the GT Line in diesel, just for example, at just on 600,000. So that's the range on the 5008s. Remember, it does include the new Peugeot Pledge, as they call it, the, that they've come in, the Peugeot Pride program, which, among many other things, gives you a five-year warranty, five-year, 100,000-kilometer service plan included on all their vehicles in the range. So Peugeot are trying very hard. They're making an effort in South Africa. They certainly got a nice product. The thing that stands out to me on this vehicle is the typical French soft, smooth ride on a freeway. Handling, nice. Obviously, it's a biggish car. It's not a racing car. It's not a sports car. You don't expect it. But it's got this sporty steering wheel, which is quite nice. Overall, definitely a nice car to live with. Definitely, if this, these are your needs, you need the seven-seat option, big boot as a five-seater, etc. Well, and you want an SUV, this must be one that all, I think, clever buyers would consider. Check it out for yourself. For Motor Matters, I'm Eleanor, and I'll see you next time.